How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel today. We're going to be talking about the history and taking a brief look at the origins behind the very historic and prominent uh, rivalry between the two main uh, supercar manufacturers out of Italy, Ferrari and Lamborghini. Now before we get into today's video, definitely be sure to leave a like down below if you like this content. I mainly do car reviews, automotive news videos, POV driving videos, automotive history videos like this, and a bunch of other automotive content as well. So if you're into that stuff, definitely be sure uh, to subscribe. It really helps me out a lot as a smaller YouTuber and uh, any support that you really show the channel definitely helps me out a lot and I really do appreciate it. But now that uh, that is kind of out of the way, we're going to be talking a little bit about the origin of Ferrari and more specifically Lamborghini. We're mainly just going to be talking about uh, Lamborghini for most of this video and you can't talk about Lamborghini without talking about its founder, uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini. So Ferruccio Lamborghini was born on a farm in uh, Italy during 1916 uh, during the height of World War I. Now, considering that he came from a working class family, he pretty much had two options in life. Either, uh, you know, stick to the family farm and pursue a, a life farming and agriculture on the countryside or go into the city and take a risk when he was eventually of age and start as a factory worker. And considering from a very young age, he always used to tinker in his dad's garage. Eventually when he got old enough, he did take a chance and leave his family behind and go into the big city and start working on an assembly line as a factory worker. Now for Ferruccio, he did find some success in this and in 1935, he actually opened his very own uh, workshop. Now that workshop, was pretty successful except unfortunately in 1940 he was actually drafted into the Italian Air Force. Now in the Italian Air Force uh, during World War II he was pretty much just a mechanic for a squadron in the Air Force and that lasted until 1943 when the Germans eventually took control of that garrison and uh, until basically he worked there until the end of the war where in 1944, 1945, early 1945 he was actually arrested by the United States and the United Kingdom troops that came uh, into Italy and pretty much every everyone a part of that squadron was arrested but once they found out that of Ferruccio's abilities he not only worked on Axis vehicles now he also helped out the allied forces and, and worked on their vehicles and they put his talent to work and he continued to work on American and British vehicles alike until 1947 when he founded his own tractor company which eventually made him enough profit so that he reinvested actually back into the company and they were able to buy their own factory in 1951. Now as the founder of this tractor company, Ferruccio Lamborghini definitely had his, had his fair share in financial success over the years and into the early 60s or late 50s, early 60s, he really started becoming an avid collector of sports cars. His personal collection consisted of Alfa Romeos, Maseratis, Mercedes, uh, Jaguars alike, and, as well as multiple Ferraris. Now, considering he was a mechanic at heart and by trade, he was very critical of the cars that he purchased for his own collection. And one of the things that he really found to be wrong with the Ferraris in particular is that they basically just blew through clutches uh, way sooner than they should have. And he actually took that problem uh, very personally and he actually went all the way to Odena where he confronted Enzo Ferrari face to face in person and Enzo Ferrari pretty much brushed him off saying that you may be able to drive a tractor but you will never be able to handle a Ferrari. Now I always thought this was kind of ironic as a quote uh, because I've known this sto story for quite some time and I mean, considering that Enzo Ferrari kind of came from humble beginnings as well as a blacksmith in the Emilia Romagna uh, region of Italy, I, I kind of find that a little bit hypocritical from Enzo Ferrari. But then again, the man was known to fire whoever he wanted and he was known to have a little bit of an edge to him. So instead of being offended by this, Ferruccio Lamborghini took that as a personal challenge and he actually founded Automobili Lamborghini in 1963 and then bought an additional factory just devoted to automobile Lamborghini so that they can start producing cars and then a year later in 1964 the first official working Lamborghini came out the GT350 and also the original kind of logo uh, for Lamborghini is 
very similar to today and the raging bull that you see on the Lamborghini logo actually has to do with Ferruccio Lamborghini's astrology sign. He is in fact a Taurus and the sign for a Taurus is a bull. Plus growing up he actually had a fascination for bullfighting. So that is a little fun fact that it's kind of cool behind the actual uh, design of the logo. Now 1966 was also a very important year in the foundation of Lamborghini because that is when the Mura P400 originally hit the assembly lines. Now the Mura P400 was the very first Lamborghini to incorporate the rear mid-engine platform, which we still see in many supercars and hypercars today. I'd, I'd actually argue that 90% or over 90% of supercars are a mid-engine layout. So that is pretty cool. Now I know that there was probably some mid-engine sports cars before the Lamborghini Mura P400, but the Mura was one of the very first, you know, mo uh, significant rear mid-engine sports cars of its day. Now after that, pretty much the rest is history. And what's very interesting is looking at the culture behind the two brands today. Obviously fast forwarding from you know the 60s to today, a lot of stuff has changed. Lamborghini for example has gone through many different owners as Ferruccio actually stepped down in the mid uh, 70s with the oil crisis uh, going on back then. But still, the actual culture has pretty much stayed the same. For example, if you walk into a Lamborghini dealership, you can wear raggedy clothes, you can basically look uh, homeless and they won't kick you out unless you're causing obviously some sort of disturbance, but they won't kick someone out based on uh, just their appearance. And I believe actually Mr. Beast did a video kind of displaying this, which I find really, really cool. Whereas in a Ferrari dealership, uh, they're pretty much just like looking for an excuse to kick you out. Now, I'm not saying that people that work for Ferrari or Ferrari executives are all just, you know, mean people, but the overall culture of the two brands are completely different. I mean, even if you look nowadays in the past decade or so with the rise of a lot of automotive social media influencers, pretty much when it comes to uh, when it comes to Lamborghini, uh, the sky's the limit. You can, if you own a Lamborghini, you can modify it however you want. Obviously, probably the most crazy Lamborghini out right now is probably Alex Choi's Lamborghini, which has been on uh, Daily Driven Exotics channel as well as his channel and Supercar Suspects. But I'm sure you've seen that thing, you know, spitting fire like four feet out of it, out of its exhaust, as well as other social media influencers such as the Stradman with his wide body Aventadors with his crazy like custom interiors and all that stuff. And Lamborghini doesn't care. They, as a matter of fact, they actually enjoy watching people modify their cars. Whereas with Ferrari, if any of you know anything about the actual brand of Ferrari, uh, pretty much a seasoned assist comes right to mind when you were talking about Ferraris and modifying Ferraris. And that is an actual letter that Ferrari will send to owners basically saying, hey, uh, we're taking your car back because we don't agree with the modifications that you're putting on our Ferrari and you're hurting our brand in a way. Also, if you're unaware of what I'm talking about, literally just type in Ferrari, seize and desist and on, on, on the YouTube search bar and you'll get plenty of different videos that pop up. Probably my most favorite one is this uh, little two minute video. It's basically someone interviewing Jay Leno and he's explaining how he will never own a Ferrari and how he just hates that brand so much and it's almost like a chore to go into their dealerships. Now, needless to say, both of the brands, even though their cultures are very different nowadays and Ferrari owners may still look down on Lamborghini owners uh, with that old thought process in mind. Uh, both the companies manufacture amazing vehicles. And also let me know down in the comments below what you guys like better. Do you guys like Ferraris better, Lamborghinis better? Uh, and explain why, because I'm kind of making this video through a biased lens. I, I personally love Lamborghini. I like Lamborghinis more than Ferraris. Doesn't mean I don't like Ferraris, but I just, I'm definitely more of a Lamborghini guy. And hopefully if I'm fortunate enough in my lifetime to own either one of those cars or either one of those uh, brands of cars, I would definitely be going with a Lamborghini. And again, that's my reasoning behind it. They're just more of, I guess, a down to earth uh, brand. And I know that's kind of ironic when we're talking about supercars that cost 200,000, 300,000, or even you know half a million uh, dollars, 
But still, that little interaction between Enzo Ferrari and Ferruccio Lamborghini all the way back in the early 1960s has pretty much influenced the culture of the two brands uh, that we see today. So that's pretty much just going to wrap it up for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of the two brands down below. What's your favorite? And also definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe like I told you guys before. Also click that little bell icon down there to turn on post notifications. That also helps me out a lot as a smaller YouTuber in the algorithm. But like always guys, thank you so much for all the support and I'll see you in the next one.